chapter and the verse, but I pretty much know what's in there. So don't, if it comes to any questions, I don't think we've got time today, but another day if it comes to questions, I'll just talk in general. So the detail stuff, somebody else does that, inshallah. And I got very scared. I got so scared because I realized I've been behaving in a way which was not acceptable to God. And it was not on. No more towel whipping. Letting tires down. It's my fault. I've got to, have to pay the price. As well as the melting stuff and the knots. I did believe that the Bible contained some truth. Even though upon reading it, and I was the kind of person that reads it, like I've got a calculator with me. And it's saying various numbers and, and it's not quite matching up and I'm, I'm, and I'm typing him in and seeing if it makes sense. But even with the contradictions and inconsistencies, like parts which don't seem to match, I still thought it was the truth. I thought I can't ignore this book, so I reformed my character. And at the same time, my family, they had a spiritual awakening. I thought I can't ignore this book, so I reformed my character. And at the same time, my family, they had a spiritual awakening. It's like somebody had just switched on a light. I started to, uh, well, I did well at school before, but I was less naughty. I didn't go to school much, but I was less naughty. I never got involved in a church because I went to several churches and what I saw, they was, they was not practicing what was written in their book. They seemed to like you have the Bible, the Old Testament, and then the Gospels, and then you have this whole bunch of other stuff, which seems to say a different message to all the stuff that's in there before, and it seems to put a different twist on it. Like, like it's come from somewhere, I'm not quite sure where. Like someone seemed to have invented it. And it wasn't Jesus saying these things, peace be upon him. It was somebody else. They just don't seem to be following their book. So it says in the Quran, if only the Jews and the Christians would follow what's written in their book. So I started college and I was unhappy. I dropped out, I quit. I was looking for something better, I just wasn't satisfied. Have you ever heard the expression, the grass is always greener on the other side? Is it just from the UK? Or everybody hear that one? Acha. It means you think there's something better out there than what you've got. So I wanted to travel the world and go and find it. So I thought, hang on, hang on. Even though I've dropped out of college, I'm supposed to be a smart and clever. The teacher said I was when I went to school. So I joined the Merchant Navy. I thought, I'll find a way of getting paid to travel the world. I thought, alhamdulillah. And it started with one month's pre-sea training at the Glasgow College of Nautical Studies. Now really it was like fire training, sea survival, water stuff, that sort of thing. Basically they put me in a burning box and then tried to drown me and then said I was ready. Now this institution is based in a place called Scotland. Anybody heard of Scotland? Acha based in the very northern part of the UK. But the part of the town it was in was very dangerous. In one month, there's like three bodies found, dead bodies, not just like people falling asleep. Three dead bodies found within 100 yards of my room. The locals would come to the windows, and they've got bars at the windows on the ground floor. I'd hand it, I was on the first floor. They have machetes poking through the bars and knives. It's in Scotland, in the UK in the dangerous part of town. It's changed now, it's different. The police used to patrol it twice a day with helicopters. It was the kind of area where people drive around it, not through it. People walk around in gangs. It's good to be a good runner and a good fighter at that time, because we don't know which you're going to need. It felt like survival training. And it was good, for what, good training for what was to come. So. I left the UK from Liverpool, heading for the Caribbean. I thought I'd leave all this behind. Alhamdulillah, nice and warm. Winter coming. 
I thought I could manage in the Caribbean over the winter. I was on a 28,000 ton container ship. Now the Merchant Navy, it's not like the military. They haven't got guns and stuff. Maybe a flare gun. They carry cargo around the world. So it's not like press-ups. All my colleagues is more interested in drinking. It just didn't feel right. Anyway, we crossed the Atlantic Ocean. And at the front of the ship, when you look over, there's these like fish mid-ocean. They jump out the water and fly, and it was like sort of glide for a bit, and then back in the water. It was very exciting. Never seen anything like it. It's just a feeling of excitement and freedom. Like I'd left behind, like, what I saw was a load of problems. Not my problems, society's problems. And I was ready for a fresh start, new place, never been there. A load of new places. And I got an open mind with a positive outlook, very optimistic. It was getting warmer every day. It was going through different time zones, setting your watch as you cross it in the Atlantic every day. I was heading for the Caribbean, South America, and Central America. It was very exciting. There's so many places I've been to, and I've forgotten most of them. So if I get some of the details wrong of specific places, forgive me. I don't want to be sued by, like, Haiti or Venezuela or something. So we start off in Central America. It was in Guatemala. I thought, what a humble people. They're very friendly, but always it's like eyes down, minding their own business. I thought, what a great place. I could like it here. I could move here. Only later I learned of all the mass murders. There's like a genocide that had happened there not long before. The people were grieving. And I went to South America and Venezuela. Half the town was on fire. But I was told it's normal. You expect this. See, it's South America. I was with Tony from Tobago, my workmate. It was very, very hot. Maybe not just because half the town was on fire, it was just hot. So we got an orange drink. And in all fairness, it did look a bit like a hand grenade. It was like, you know, like a round bottle. But it wasn't, it was orange juice. Now the first warning, there was a boy running up a hill like very steep, like this. Like he's running for his life. And I turned around expecting to see a tiger or something. But there wasn't. We don't have tigers in Mumbai. And the next thing, there's gunfire. Pistol shooting. I know what this sounds like. I used to shoot pistols. But that was before I was a Muslim. Don't do that anymore. Alhamdulillah. Next thing, I've got a shotgun pointed at me. And the guy's eight feet away from me. Roughly. I didn't measure it, but it was too far to grab the gun and too close to run. So I just froze. I think he thought I got a hand grenade. That's why he singled me out with the, with the shotgun. It's like, didn't feel very safe. The only thing going through my mind, I just thought it's too late to pray. It's too late. We don't know when that moment is coming, when we will be the end of our life. One time I fell overboard and I shouted, I'm out. Stupid thing to say. I should have shouted, help. It's like I'm playing cricket or something. But you don't know how you will react when that moment happens and something happens so unexpectedly. You don't know how you will react. And that's how I reacted. I thought, too late to pray. I felt like I was not ready to die. Like I got things in life to discover and work out what